this is Stephanie, and this is Talk Tales and Trivia, the show where I talk about society, culture, pop culture, and I throw in a little bit of trivia too, so that you can stump your family and friends. It is so much fun. If you are a new listener here at Talk Tales and Trivia, I want to welcome you with open arms, and thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. I hope that you enjoy it. So now everybody, sit down, relax, listen, and enjoy this episode. I do have to tell you that the last week of December, I did one of my episodes on the Ice Hotel in Yuckmuck, Sweden. It was a tale, and I enjoyed it so much that I thought I would bring you another tale. I hope you enjoy this one. 1941 might have been the year of the Jeep inception, but not the Jeep we know of today, no. Back then, it was utilized for military use. It was bare knuckles and a skeleton of what it is today. Nowadays, the Wrangler roaming around all over the country is all gussied up, complete with all the necessities of any other car on the road, ranging from the base model to a super deluxe model. I see them every day, all day long, where I live. In the summer, where I live, near the beaches of the Long Island Sound and the Atlantic Ocean, the Wrangler becomes a sexy symbol and a must-have for the weekend warrior. Tops down, wind blowing in the hair of all that are lovers of this super off-road sports utility vehicle. The off-road vehicle that anyone of any age can and does enjoy. But decades ago, I didn't notice or even really care or fawn over the Jeep Wrangler until I was about 13. That was a long time ago. I was in a boarding school in a very tony town in Connecticut, where the rich and famous came to live in their big mansions. At the time, I was a middle schooler, just trying to make it in the world where I would never fit in, and should have never been. I was indeed a misunderstood misfit, an introvert, an uninterested student, and I was terribly homesick. If there was ever a light in my eye, it was for a senior named Sam. So handsome Sam was. Sam was a day student, and he lived in a town close by. I envied him, going home every day, always having friends around him. Crazy cute, polite, full of charm, good humor, and humanity. He stood for something. Sam made me feel worthy. He talked to me. He listened and he cared about what I had to say. That was rare. Sam drove a cool, red Jeep Wrangler. It wasn't new. No. It was rusty and rattled. A lot. Sam later graduated in that spring and went to see friends and sightsee in California. He was making a road trip. That sounded so cool. I have to admit, I was envious. I wish I could have gone far away from where I was. Then days later, the news came. He was going along the winding road in the Hollywood Hills when his wrangler went off the cliff, killing him instantly. I told myself I would never forget that day. But after that, life did go on. And although I never forgot Sam, other things came into my life. Putting that memory in the back of my head, you know, Boyfriends, concerts, living in New York City, pets, parents, college, etc., etc. So, it was one day recently a friend asked me where I got my love for Jeep Wranglers. I thought about it. Hmm. Well, I am on my fourth Jeep Wrangler. It wasn't a silly question. I didn't know. I remember going home and thinking about it. Over a cup of tea, I rattled my mind. I racked my brain. I looked longingly out the window for the answer. Finally, the answer came. Sam, the boy that treated me with dignity and respect. The senior who defended me against the bullies in the middle school who gave me such a hard time. The only person who I knew at the time that drove a Wrangler. The person who really would have been a leader, someone to admire and look up to, 
if he had lived longer, one that, if I had to bet, would have made a difference in the world, because he had made a difference in my world. And so it was in 1996. I got a white Jeep Wrangler, complete, with a black soft top. It was beautiful. It was in the parking lot of the Jeep dealership. It was new, but like Sam's Wrangler, was not perfect. Vinyl seats, no air conditioner, small wheels, dinky roll bar, bumpy, 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 barely any shock absorbers. But despite all that, it was my Jeep Wrangler. I would go for short and long drives just to drive in the Wrangler. I was so proud. And I quickly began to adopt that Wrangler wave that all Wranglers know about. <laughs> it's a Jeep thing. I don't think you'd understand unless you own one. And so it was at that time I started planning my trips to the annual Jeep Jamborees, exclusive off-road adventures for Jeep owners. But I am still amazed that it took one question from a curious friend 40 years later to have my fond memories of Sam come to the forefront of my mind. No, <laughs> I never made the direct connection until that time. Now, well, it seems that I can't not make the connection. And so it is. I talk about Sam today, decades later, still with fond memories of the boy who was kind and almost brotherly. A light in an otherwise dark time in my middle school days brought the smile to my face, a light to my eye, a freeing change in a clearer vision to look to the past without blinders on and to know everything turned out okay. I now understand that looking in the rearview mirror brought back those beautiful memories that have been locked up inside for so long. So here goes. Sam, I never got to thank you. I hope you are happy wherever you are. Be sure to know that this girl right here will never forget you. When you think that life isn't going great and isn't the best it can be, you can look back and remember your Sam or whoever it is that has helped you in some way, a small way or a big way in your life. Perhaps it's somebody that you forgot about, but remember them and cherish those thoughts and memories forever. Is there a Sam in your background? Is there somebody that has made an impact in your life that you have perhaps forgotten about? You can email me and tell me your story. I would love to hear it. My email address is talktalesandtrivia at gmail.com. Go to talktalesandtrivia.com to go to all my episodes, my social media links, and that bio on me is there if you're wondering what I'm all about. And if you have enjoyed this tale of Talk Tales and Trivia, you might very well enjoy my second podcast, Growing Uncomfortable. Go to growinguncomfortable.com to get to all the episodes, my social media links, and that bio on me is there if you're wondering what I'm all about. And also, one more thing I have to tell you before I leave you is that you can subscribe to both Talk Tales and Trivia and Growing Uncomfortable for free. It gives you the notifications of when new episodes come out. And that is so cool. Okay, listen, I got to get out of here, but I hope that you have enjoyed this episode of Talk Tales and Trivia, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>